All right, this is going to be, this is grade one, module one, lesson one, where we are going to be using five groups to analyze and describe numbers, and we're going to use some number bonds. But before we do that, I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to take a couple of seconds to talk about one of the fluency activities, and it involves how we use our fingers to count in front of the students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, why are we doing it this way? Well, we're doing it this way because the normal way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, kind of bounces all over the place. But if we go in order like this, it helps the kids read the numbers from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So teachers, as you are working on counting, um, just be aware of that and help the kids by you trying to count so that your fingers go from left to right. All right, so now let's talk about how to use five groups and what I mean by that. Using your hands is a perfect way to explain what a five group is. Seven is five and two. So seven is decomposed five and two. Nine, nine is, can be decomposed as a five and a four, all right? And last example, six, oops, let's do it this way. Six can be decomposed as a five and a one. So we're gonna be looking for how a number can be seen as a five and a, a three, like hidden numbers, decomposed, five and what's left over. So let's take a look at these with some uh, actual number problems in the Eureka Math curriculum. So here, the directions say to circle a five and then make your number bond. So we can see we've got a whole bunch of these little creatures. I guess these are dogs because those are bon bones. So one, two, three, four, five. So there is our circled five. Plus we have six, seven, eight, nine. So we have four more for a total of nine. So what would we write? Well, we'd write here four more and our number bond would have a nine right here. So this is just like the classic part, part, whole that teachers are familiar with. So here's the part, here's the part, and here's the whole. But the specific thing is we're always gonna be looking for five groups, groups of five right here. And then, so this is kind of like one whole hand, and this is part of a hand. So five fingers on one hand, four fingers on the next hand. So if we were to look at the bones over here, so one, two, three, four, five. So there's our five. So we're going to circle a five group. And then we have two left over right here. So that's uh, the other parts. So we're going to put it right here. And we have a total of seven. Teachers, it's perfectly fine to allow students to just kind of count and recount and not quite see the connection here yet, but eventually they will, of course. Let's move to the next slide. More of the same practice, but now the numbers uh, are in the shape of dots instead of realia, figures, and it's still the exact same idea. Uh, this time the number bonds are going horizontal, and we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, so there's our five, so I'm going to circle it, and we have three left over, so there's a part, there's a part, so five and three, and all together we have eight. And, oh, let's do number seven. Let's do this one down here. So we've got five right here. And we have two right here. So if we've got five here, so that's where we're going to write our five, and we're going to put our two right here. And all together we have seven. So now teachers, um, it's kind of, I don't know, following, I don't know. What, the, what this means, but we have a five here, and so we write the five here. We have the two down here, and we have the two down here. That's kind of, teachers and adults might assume that that, that goes, that's logical, but there's nothing inherently right, uh, correct about that. We can count the five dots and put the five down here if we wanted to, and count the two dots and put the two dots up here, 
really the thing that's non-negotiable is the fact that the answer is seven. So if students are wondering about that, well, they're free to put the numbers in a different place. Uh, that's actually kind of, that's the nature of the commutative property now, isn't it? More examples of the same. Um, we're just going to count with our dominoes. Oh, I see five dots up here. So I'm going to put that here, and I see three dots down here for a total of eight. It's assumed that when you see the five, you're going to put the five here as opposed to down here. Um, but boy, if kids want to switch them around, they're allowed to because that's called the commutative property of addition, and you are certainly allowed to use that word uh, with your kids. And the last slide for this video, once again, we've returned to our vertical number bonds. And, uh, but this time, they're not laying out the five conveniently for us. This time, we actually have to do the counting. Oh, my goodness. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So there's our circle. And we see we have three left over. So our number bond is going to be five and three for the part and part. And our whole is going to be eight. Oh, let's do number 16. So we're going to count five of them, and I'm, I like labeling them, so drawing a little dash on them kind of turns them into, I don't know, cherries or something. One, two, three, four, five. There's my five, and I see that I have two left over, so my number bond will be five and two, and my part, I mean my whole, will be seven. And that wraps up Grade 1, Module 1, Lesson 1, using five groups to describe numbers.